NerdRotic.com. Welcome back to NerdRotic. My name is Gary Beekler, and I come to you from NerdRotic.com, and we need to pick the low-hanging fruit that is the Mary Sue. Now, usually I like to go to Bounding into Comics or Bleeding in a Fool for my entertainment news because I get both sides of the story. But we need to talk about the Mary Sue article in particular because it really exposes what is going on in our entertainment these days. Why Brie Larson has been thrusted upon us when they could have chosen any other actress in the world who would have been better for that role than Brie Larson. Well, they chose Brie Larson because she's an activist. And the reason they've done this is to satisfy websites like the Mary Sue, who have a lot of social currency with Disney. Disney and Marvel don't listen to the fans, but they listen to the Mary Sue and the IO9s of the world. And I don't know who even reads this garbage anymore, but I will read this to you. I hope you can sit through it because it's pretty damn cringe and see if you can catch all the hatred and bigotry that is in it. And you got to ask yourself the question, why does Disney, why does Marvel listen to these people? Why are you shaping your universe to satisfy people who don't watch your stuff or don't buy your stuff? Avengers Endgame exposes how Marvel can't handle powerful women by Princess Weeks. Well, here we go, Marvel. That big femme fatale scene you had at the end of Endgame sure did a lot of good, didn't it? And before I even get started, I hope you know, Marvel, that you can do as much as you like. You can make an A-Force movie and it will never be enough. If you put one man in that A-Force movie, the Mary Sue will be complaining about it. From what I've been told about Carol Danvers, okay, this is already starting off bad, aka Captain Marvel, it was established in her solo movie that she's one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's whole universe. Okay. Yet people are feeling as if the character was underserved in Avengers Endgame, along with the rest of Marvel's women. Oh my. Full disclosure, I personally haven't seen Captain Marvel. And part of that delay has been that despite all the overall importance of the movie in terms of there finally being a female standalone superheroine movie. So Princess Weeks must have been born yesterday because the last time I checked, not that they're the greatest movies in the world, I saw a Supergirl movie in the 80s that starred Helen Slater. Of course, there's Catwoman, there's Tank Girl, there's Elektra, which was the first female-led Marvel superhero film. It doesn't matter if it wasn't good or not, it existed, and it was a hell of a lot better than Captain Marvel. I would watch Elektra 10 times before I would watch Captain Marvel. Picking up that sentence is that I am A, not personally interested in the character, well, we can agree on that, and B, not seeing how another white, cis, unconfirmed queer heroine is moving the representation needle in any way. Here lies the problem with all of our entertainment. It is now a platform to move forward with representation. This is all spawned from the MeTube movement that has been co-opted by so many other things and the Time's Up movement. And entertainment ceases to be entertainment when storytelling doesn't come first. Representation can happen. Inclusivity can happen when the writer writes a story with that in it. But the story has to come first. First, this is just entertainment. You don't need to see yourself in everything. You don't need to be so effing self-obsessed that you need to pretend you're every hero on the screen. Do you stare at yourself in the mirror all day when you're not writing trash articles for the Mary Sue? I don't identify with Buffy the Vampire Slayer in any way, shape, or form, but I still enjoy it. I'm not going to set my head on fire because I want to be like Ghost Rider feel like I picked the wrong century to quit cocaine. I'm not discounting the meaning of it for fans. And I know plenty of women of color who love Carol and all the queer hype around her hair and subtext. What has this got to do with anything? This is supposed to be a superhero film. Marvel famously doesn't really put romances in their films anymore. I think they retired the last two romances they're going to put in anything this side of Spider-Man Homecoming, and they'll probably get rid of that one too. But to me, all the support with subtext is why the Russo brothers, though that queer moment in Endgame was worth a damn. Did anybody edit this? 
That being said, as a critic and somebody who didn't watch Captain Marvel and someone who cares about representation and diversity who still didn't watch Captain Marvel, how I feel about Carol, who still didn't watch Captain Marvel, doesn't matter when looking at her treatment exposes the issue within the MCU. Watching Carol in Endgame, I understood why they put her off-world. It's a lazy writing technique? Well, not as lazy as this article. And considering that the end credit scene in Infinity War was all about summoning her, I don't think it does justice to the hype around her. I'm sorry, what hype? Uh, I need to remind everybody in the two screenings I saw, there was absolutely zero cheering for Captain Marvel, but there was some jeers. However, as people said post-Captain Marvel actually coming out, and in this article we do need to clarify the film coming out, having Carol there sort of leaves no room for the other heroes to be anything in a movie that's supposed to send off many of them. Yes, right, it is their movie. It's a hole they dug. It's a hole they dug? Putting Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth all together with Scarlett Johansson and Jeremy Renner, the original Avengers, and Mark Ruffalo, I'm sorry, in their final movie all together is a hole they dug? Uh, I'm sorry, how much did it make? A couple billion dollars? I don't think they see it as much of a hole. The hole they have dug is listening to people like you. The hole they have dug is what we will be getting in the future, the FEMCU. But there it is. It shows just how white and male the earlier phases were and how much better they need to be. How much better they need to be. Because those were so terrible. The culmination of a decade's worth of pretty damn good storytelling leading to a film that's going to make a couple of billion dollars in a nanosecond. How terrible. Or is it just your worldview? Your bigoted worldview? Still, at least Carol is gone. Ah, uh, that would have been great if the sentence just ended right there. Because she's trying to help save the universe. Why isn't Okoye in this movie? Because it is an Avengers Endgame movie. She is not a member of the Avengers. I couldn't tell you. I just did. It was bad enough fans had to fight for Danae to be acknowledged properly in early posters. Did fans really have to fight for that? It wasn't even made clear who was running Wakanda post-Infinity War because it didn't matter who was running the United States. Where was the military during a giant battle in New York? Who cares? It's a giant superhero battle. But again, this is why we can't have nice things. Despite the fact that the majority of the fighting in the movie took place there, we know from visual confirmation that both T'Challa and Shuri were lost in the snap, but the only information about Queen Ramonda is at the end with her children, with no mention whether she was snapped with them or not. We only see Okoye in one scene despite her being on Earth and part of Natasha's squad. There isn't even an explanation offered that she's not coming to help because of Wakanda. She's just forgotten until the big damn hero scene in the final act. Well, they couldn't take the time to explain everything. I think they should explain how Jeremy Renner could have gotten a phone call from his wife who was gone for five years. Who was paying that phone bill? Despite the group shot of all the women of the MCU together around Carol, the issue is bigger than her. See Russo Brothers and Marvel and Kevin Feige, you derailed one of the better action scenes in the MCU to pander to 0.004% of your audience that doesn't even appreciate it. It has to do with the fact that they think these moments make up for the lack of diversity in the universe overall. There it is. Making Valkyrie a queen is little compensation when they didn't even make the time to confirm her sexuality in canon because that is so important. We need to know who Valkyrie scissors with. Bringing back Gamora from a different timeline doesn't matter if they fridged her in the first place and in the same movie. Kill off another woman almost the same way. It was exactly the same way. I don't even like Black Widow, but her dying for Clint's family was cringe. She deserved better than that. Really? From somebody who obviously doesn't read any of the comics, doesn't know any of the backstory that these characters are based on, that is a lot of assumptions there. And bringing up Gail Simone's fridge, Gail just used that to give her an open door into the industry, which she completely wasted, by the way. And yes, I know she's an editor-in-chief at a non-existent independent comic company that will fail any day now.
Carol being overpowered in comparison to the other heroes is both a blessing and a curse. It's great to have women in this universe with that kind of make-believe power, but as we have learned from Superman and Thor, all that means is untalented writers finding ways to tone them down so the movie isn't over too soon. I was happy seeing her in Endgame, and while I empathize with those who feel disappointed that they got almost no Carol from a movie you didn't even watch, in this movie, I had all of zero women of color on my screen, unless you include Gamora and Shiri and Okoye and Valkyrie. Thank goodness for Nebula holding it down. Otherwise, we would have left the pre-snap part of the story with no good female storylines. Marvel has to step it up. We have stuck with them through the highs and lows. Well, I'm not so sure about that because you did not watch Captain Marvel and have supported their vision, except for Captain Marvel, carrying the weight of queer representation when canon doesn't. That also requires having the same energy of representation when it comes to all women and LGBTQ plus characters. Marvel has given us their strongest Avenger. Now they need to give her a universe that can handle that and other women to help populate it. We have been let down a lot by the universe when it comes to this issue. And now we're entering a fresh new phase of the universe. There are no more excuses. Time for the Fem CU. It's sites like this that really love to use the word entitlement when calling out us YouTubers and fans who are complaining about all the politics and agenda being inserted into our franchises, particularly the MCU. Does anything sound more entitled than this? We expect you to do this. There are no more excuses from a person who didn't even watch one of your films. The film Marvel and Kevin Feige would expect Princess Weeks to go see, but she didn't even bother because... Carol Danvers and Captain Marvel doesn't really do anything for you. You see your failure, and now you're going to go ahead with more films like this? A film the director of Captain Marvel admitted was a feminist film? With the money Captain Marvel made, and it just made a little bit more now that they forced it on some theaters prior to Avengers Endgame, please see my video on this, it looks like Marvel feels emboldened to go ahead with being a woke MCU. And I know a lot of you are worried this is going to happen. I know some of you are taking a wait and see. Well, I'm here to tell you it's already happened. The MCU has already gone woke. It started a little bit with the Wasp and Ant-Man. It creeped in a little bit with Spider-Man Homecoming and it arrived with Captain Marvel. Do you think the access media pressure is gonna end there? No, there was another article on this very same subject from io9 so disney and marvel feel caught in the middle well they have no problem not listening to us they should not listen to them as well and just try to make some good stories but unfortunately we know what we're going to get that's why we've been making videos that's why we have been calling this crap out as much as we can and unfortunately it looks like we will be chronicling the mcu's demise when it doesn't need to do this but maybe we are on the verge of another great wave of independent creators because the franchises we love, Star Trek, Star Wars, Marvel Comics, DC Comics, the MCU, Game of Thrones are crashing around us and it's time to fill the void, to fill the need of just good, solid, fun, thrilling entertainment. Despite its flaws, Endgame was a good ending to the MCU, and I'm grateful we got the 11 years we did. Everybody have a great day. Please like, share, and subscribe, and may the small folks sing songs of your greatness. Nerdorotic.com, please subscribe.